think three cylinders and you'll think of Triumph. Think Triumph and you'll think of all the amazing sounds they make. It is impossible to not like that whistle and whine you get from idle to mid-range, which then gets taken over by the growl from the intake as you go up the rev range. Stop! My penis can only get so erect. <sighs> now. You must be joking. Oh, you don't like the whistle? <laughs> Just as I said, it is impossible to not like the whistle from a triple engine. But why do triples whine? Well, here's a better question. Have you ever asked that and gotten a straight answer? Things that I heard as reasons in the past. The chain is too tight on those engines. The water cooling system. The crankcase vent impeller. The cam chain noise. Chains don't whistle. The timing belt on the Desmodromic. Okay, this guy's lost. Someone needs to take him home. So no, the whistle does not come from the factory equipped tea kettle. British bikes am I right? Or the flux capacitors charging the dilithium crystals in the infinity chamber. To get the real answer, we need to look into the engine configuration itself. Now you and I both know how great inline three engines are. They're vertically balanced, they're compact and combine the low down grunt of a twin as well as the up top scream of an inline four. What's there not to like? But in this basic configuration, it suffers from a pretty serious flaw. Let's keep this very simple. This is an inline three with cylinder one at top dead center, which means it just finished coming up and will be going down. Now that sudden change of direction from going up, top dead center, then going down, is going to create a rocking motion on the left of this crankshaft. Then after 240 degrees of rotation, cylinder three will be at top dead center and creating its own rocking motion motion on the right of this crankshaft. So what you end up with is an engine that rocks from left to right, just like a kayak would. And that introduces very nasty vibrations we do not want. Now some very smart engineers wanted their engines to actually last and be reliable. So what they found was, if you have a weight, move on the opposite side of the crank, then you can neutralize that rocking motion. So as a piston is moving up on the left side of the crank, the weight is also moving up on the right side of the crank. And this very quickly turned into a piston. Video. And and thus, the counterbalancer shaft was born. In fact, this is the exact same shaft used on the street triple. The shaft will have an offset weight at one end, plus another offset weight at the other end, 180 degrees out of phase with the first. This creates an equal and opposite rocking couple to cancel that of the crank, leaving the engine to be as nice and smooth as Vin Diesel's head. Now you're probably wondering why the hell would I care about any of this? Well, the mythical whistle comes from how the counterbalancer shaft is connected to the crank. As you can see here, the shaft is connected to the crank through what's called straight cut gears, as opposed to the much quieter helical cut gears. If you ever went in reverse in the car, which I'm gonna assume you did, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The sound you're hearing is the whine of straight gears meshing, while all the other gears in a typical car, first, second, third, all the way to fifth or sixth, are helically connected and pretty much silent. This is what a car sounds like with nothing but straight gears. As you can tell, straight cut gears whine a lot. Do you think my girlfriend has straight cut gears? Now, all inline three bike manufacturers in the world, Triumph, Yamaha, MV Augusta, pre-Chinese Benelli, to name a few, all use this exact same setup of straight cut counterbalancers. And that creates two questions. Why do they have straight cut gears instead of helical? Why do some whine more than others? Well, the first question is quite interesting. Straight cut gears on top of being noisy are actually weak compared to helical ones, despite what people think due to their racing application. They are actually weaker. Straight teeth are engaged very briefly and the meshing occurs over instantly rather than over a long period of time. So there's a lot more stress and whine. So did Triumph and all the others use the noise shortcoming and called it character? Well, that's only half true. The issue with the helicals is they're more expensive because they're slightly more difficult to manufacture. But most importantly, helicals put back and forth axial loads along the axis of the shaft, requiring a thrust bearing, a stronger case, and therefore creating more weight and complexity, not to mention that they generate more heat and therefore sap some power. So straight cut gears are the widely used solution owing to their lightness and cheapness and before you know it, people actually start to like the noise they make. As for why some whine more than others, well, that's down to a lot of factors. Is their name Karen? <laughs> 
Some have the counterbalance deep inside the engine with maybe thick cases so you can't hear it as well. Not all straight cut gears are created equal. Some have deeper meshings, they have different tolerances or bigger teeth. The amount of oil that is sprayed on the gears will also change the sound they make. The less oil lands on the gears, the noisier they'll be. The engine size itself can be a factor where the engine size sometimes can be so big that the combustion noise completely overpowers everything else. So you can't really hear the whine that well. All these factors play a role in how a triple winds. I find the street triple and Daytonas to be the whistliest, um, followed by the BMW K75. And the Yamaha CP3. The others usually try to engineer it out, like MV Augusta, where you can't really hear it well unless your ear is kind of tuned to pick it up. So there you have it. Yes, the source of the wine is coming from this ferry shaft and the way it is connected to the crank. So next time Dave, who's as academic as a premiership footballer, tells you that triples wine because of a fourth cylinder with a piston that rotates at the opposite frequency of the other three, you can call him out. I hope you enjoyed this and learned a thing or two. If you did, you owe it to yourself to subscribe. It's free. What's the matter with you? What's the matter? If you've got any interesting question like this one you'd like me to cover, then make sure to leave them down below. If you want to tell me I'm wrong, same place down below. All right, I'll see you on the next one. The engine size itself can be a factor. The engine size itself can be a factor. The engines can be sometimes so big that the combustion. Oh, f***ing hell. Can do it.